So if you're just joining me right now, um, you should watch the previous video to this first. Um, the actual, which shows how to bring in OSC data from a phone into Touch Designer. I'm not going to go over all that. I'm just going to go over how to adjust and change some of the values and smooth it out. So where we were before, we had a, we had actually taken the rotation of the phone, which is the Radphone Quaternion 2, and that is actually changing the amplitude of this right here. Now this is cool and all, but I want it to be more drastic. Now there's a couple ways I can do that. So we had actually dragged this value and dropped it here in amplitude and made it a chop reference. And by making a chop reference, if we click on that word amplitude right here, so make sure you have noise clicked on, click on amplitude and it pops open this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just hover over the left edge and bring this open a little farther. There we go, so we can see it. This op select one rad phone quantum two. If you look, it's saying we're looking at an operator. Which operator? Select one. Now, what in that? In these little brackets, rad phone quaternion two. That's saying the channel that it's looking at. So this is a little bit of code, and what that means is we can mess with code. So right now it goes between the value of like 0.9 and negative 0.9, and so I can actually go this after this little bit of code here, I can click here, make a space, hit shift eight, which will make the star right there, or the asterisk, and that's a multiply sign. And I can multiply this by, let's say, 10. So at zero, it's still at zero, but when I start to move it into the negative, it goes all the way, and look how crazy this is going now, into the negatives, or into the positive when I rotate the phone, so instead of going from negative 0.9 to 0.9, it's going from uh, negative 9 to 9. And so this gets really drastic. Now, oh no, I accidentally clicked off of that. Don't worry, we're good. It's back and it's moving. Let me make sure. There we go. We're still good. We're still good. All right, yeah. So now another way to do this so let's say I don't want it to go in the negatives. I just want it to go in the positives. But you see this value, and we're going to go here to quaternion 4. This value right, or quaternion 2, it goes from negative 0.9 to 0.9. So we're going to add something in here. And this is why we kind of made these extra things here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag OSC1 over a little bit. And I'm going to zoom in by scrolling in with my scroll wheel. I'm going to hover over this actual line, this green line, till it turns yellow. And I can right click on that and click insert operator, which will take one of these nodes, one of these ops, and put it in between them. In the search, I'm going to type in math, M-A-T-H, math. And there's a math, and I'm going to click it, and I'm going to drop it. And you can see right now, all we see is we see all the same stuff, but now we have some new things we can do. So if we click on the math, if you look up here, there's a few different things up here. There's op and there are channel ops and combining things, combining channels, multiply and add, range, common. Now, the same thing we did by multiplying by 10 in the actual code, we can do that here as well. And we can make our thing go far, far more crazy than multiples of 10. Oh my gosh, it could be insanity. Oh, and I keep accidentally moving this a little bit more than I want to. Let's hit play again. There we go. I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and make that one again. But what I do want to do is make this not actually go into the negative. So let me see. As I move this to the, as I twirl my phone, you can see it goes to positive and negative. So what I can do is right here, I'll go to the math and I'll go to select range. And in range, I can say, so from 0 to 1 to a different range. So this is called mapping. I'm going to remap what this range is. So it goes basically from 0.9 to negative 0.9. So whoops, I'm going to click back on that. I'm going to go to the 0 and go negative 1. So what I'm going to say is from the range negative 1 to 1, I want this to go to what? And I can say, and 0 to 1 is pretty good. So now, negative 1 to 1. So when it gets to negative 1, it gets to 0. 
And when it gets to one, it gets to one. So it's staying only in the positive. So now when I turn my phone all the way this way, I'm in the negatives. Or I, where I would normally be in the negatives, I'm at the zero. And as I move it to the right, ha-cha, it's getting big and blobby and um, all the way up to this point eight. But if we look inside of here, it's getting up to eight, nine, uh, because we are multiplying this by 10 there. Pretty cool. Now, it's a little bit quick. Maybe I want this to be smoothed out a little bit. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to click and move my select over to the right, click and move my null over to the right, click and move my noise over to the right. If you can't click and select the select, if it's like this, just make sure you go down to where that little star is and click that so it's back to its normal mode. It's not active. And before the null, I'm going to add one more thing to smooth things out, and that's called a lag. So I'm going to zoom in between the math and the null. I'm going to hover over this actual operator. I'm going to right click. I'm going to insert operator and type in, in the search up top, lag. L-A-G for lag. And there's lag. And so what the lag does is it has it kind of lag behind. So it's a little bit smoother. It's not going to be super jerky. Now, with the lag selected, I'm going to change these numbers a little bit. I'm going to have it lag 1 and 1 instead of 0.2. So it's going to take a second to catch up and a second to die down. So when I move my phone, look at that. So it takes a little while to actually catch up. So down to 0, and I'm going to flip it. And it slowly zooms up. Oh, I got to hit play on my thing again because I keep accidentally touching my phone. But the lag will smooth things out for you. Now, 1 and 1 is a bit much, so 0.2 and 0.2 felt pretty good. But here's the thing that I can show you with that. So if I flip it all the way around, there's this point where it goes from the 0 to that. And if I add a really long lag there, instead of it hitting just instantly, like let's say I make that 2 and 2, so two seconds and two seconds, instead of just instantly going, it will take a second to get there. And it will be smooth over about two seconds time. So right there is where it's at about zero. And if I keep going, oh, it rises real. But instead of being quick, it kind of takes its time to get up there. So that's a way to adjust values. Now, I used this select back here, but another thing you can do is from the OSC in, I'm going to go ahead and just up in this area, hit tab and hit select. And I made a new select node. I can just click from this output of the OSC, just normal mouse click and drag it up to put in there. And earlier I selected in the previous video, I just selected one thing. I might be able to just select, let's see, where's light? So just the light. And so if I want to affect just the light value, but not everything else, I can select out the light. And so when I bring it up to the thing, up to the light or not, and mess with it, I can, act, I can actually just mess with this. Um, like, let me right click, type in lag. I could put in a lag for just the light, and I can disable the lag down here. And I just click this little button here, which disables uh, or bypasses something. So now you can really see the difference in this with lag. If I just, if I hold it up to the phone, that goes instantly, that takes a little bit. Let's go ahead and make this one second in and one second out. And so I will move my phone away, that's down to nine, and this takes a few seconds to get there. Move it back up, this smooths out and takes a few seconds to get there. Move it away, it slowly moves down. So that's a way to get smoother values. But in general, what we looked over here is actually using the sensors in our phones, boom, 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 and sending it over our wireless internet connection, boom, 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 into this thing, Touch Designer. Now, if you want to learn more about Touch Designer, like how to actually like go farther and bigger with these projects, I have some links uh, to the, your first interactive touch designer project, which is really um, something that I made for some students that I had that was a really good project that they really like. And we use this sphere noise thing, which is a really fun thing to do. Um, and I have a whole bunch of tutorials all about touch designer. So feel free to watch those. It is a fantastic program. It's really easy to learn. Um, and by easy, I mean, 
it's really fun to learn. Um, and it's better than, it's quicker than learning coding right off the bat, but you can use coding with it, as you can see here. And it's just a really responsive, really good software. So I hope you had a good time looking at this stuff, and I hope you have a good day. Peace, y'all.